I am going to discuss Microsoft Azure Functions and so let's start without wasting time. So as you can see on the screen, all the highlighted sections we are going to discuss today that Azure Functions, Advantages, Triggers, Binding and Use Cases. All other topics we will discuss in our upcoming video sessions like practical with Visual Studio, Durable Function Type, Orchestrator Activity etc. and Durable Function Patterns like function chaining, fan in, fan out, async, monitor and more, error handling and resource manager template. Okay, so let's move ahead without wasting time to learn about the SVR functions. So, understanding of C Sharp because that we are going to use this language in the all upcoming sessions and Azure Cloud Computing Services that will be very helpful to understand this session. And all the suggested videos are available in the description. Okay, Azure function is. So, let's go by the definition. Azure Functions is a serverless solution to write less code, maintain less infrastructure and save on cost. Okay, it means we don't need to write so much code. Okay, and we need to maintain very less infrastructure and we can save a lot of money on cost. How we will see instead of worrying about the maintaining server, the cloud infrastructure source is needed to keep your application running. And this is the beauty of Azure Functions. You focus on the piece of code only that matters most for you and Azure Functions handle the rest of the world. Okay, focus on the business thing which is actually required that piece of code should work. Okay, so we often build systems to react to a series of critical events, update, update, delete or anything or whether we are building API or responding to database changes and processing IoT data streams or even managing message queues. So every application needs a way to run some code as these events occurs because we want to process those events. Okay, for example, if you are adding some record, so you want to save those changes into your database. This is one of the very basic example, right? So let's move ahead. So what Azure function consists of? If you will see in this very basic diagram, when we say functions, it means we are seeing only piece of code. In addition, when we are talking about the events, it means we are talking about the trigger. Okay, it can be add trigger, update trigger, delete trigger, anything and on the triggering of that, we can process some data, we can bind some data, maybe it is input output data. Okay, and the combination of all these things we call Microsoft Azure functions. Okay, and we also call serverless function because we don't maintain anything, everything is maintained by Microsoft Azure service provider. Okay, so let's move ahead. So when we say in terms of for event oriented processing azure function provides compute on demand yes as most of the services of microsoft azure are compute on demand and in terms of azure functions it provides in two significant ways first azure functions allows you to implement your system's logic into readily available blocks of code these code these piece of code that you write that that are called functions Different functions can run anytime you need to respond to the grid event. So that kind of configuration we can do with Azure functions. Second, as request increase or you can say as demand increase, Azure functions meets the demand with as many resources and functions instances as necessary but only while needed. This is the beauty. As requests fall, as resources and application instances drop off automatically which is the beauty of this azure function providing compute resources on demand is the essence of serverless computing in azure so now you must be thinking about what actually triggers errors and what are the bindings so a trigger is responsible for executing or you can say running an azure function and these are dozens of triggers to choose from and to configure them logic okay when we are here, it means we are executing and we are running an Azure function. For example, we are saying HTTP trigger. Okay, HTTP trigger. We are hitting a URL. Okay, maybe it's a um, hypertext transfer protocol with the help of that we are using that request. Don't think again and again in our upcoming sessions. Okay, so this is the basic definition of trigger. So it defines how a function is informed 
and a function must have exactly one trigger if you are creating a function so there will be only one trigger to execute that function you can say so triggers have associating something and we produce out which is often provided the payload of the function please you already know it means we are giving some input binding to a function is literally connecting another resources to the function binding or output binding when we binding we are giving some something as a input to the function output binding means we are generating something from function or in both the ways data from bindings is provided to the function as parameter yes obviously you can mix and match different bindings to suit your needs yes it's up to us either we want to bindings are optional and a function might have one or multiple input you avoid coding access to the other services your function receive data for example a content of a queue message that you receive in a function parameter and you send that data for example to create a queue message by using the return value of the function so this is a very basic example in practical in our upcoming sessions okay so these are the some practical scenarios binding or what can be the example of output binding in the very first example if you will see a new queue message arrive which runs a function to write to another queue for example in a input to the function we are receiving some message that we are writing to another queue okay so as a input even we are doing nothing and we are creating a queue message within the function and producing output and passing to the clock trigger this is example of can be of timer schedule job reads blob storage blob is nothing it's a file student and creates a new cosmos db document cosmos db is nothing but document db which exists in microsoft services okay and blob storage and as an out db similarly you can have a look of other two examples of event grid and book as well which is it's an input we are doing nothing soft graph processing okay i hope it is clear now a bit now let's move ahead so what are the other options which are available with microsoft azure functions so as you build your functions you have the following options and resources available use your preferred language for example you can use c sharp java javascript powershell or python or use a custom handler to use virtually or any other language okay these all op options are available in terms of automatic deployment from a tool based approach to using an external pipeline with all these things there are myriad of available with azure functions now in terms of troubleshooting a function if you are facing any issues we can use monitoring tools for example app insights of microsoft azure insight into your apps means what is happening in your function at what moment at what instance with every information and the last one function plan in every uh, in i think in most of the microsoft services you will see the consumption plan available means you only pay while your function the premium and the apps for specialized need means you want to perform something more than just basic okay so that options are also available with azure functions now the advantage is why you should choose serverless it gives advantage of on demand computing workloads and integration wide region wide variety available it can be integrated with devops develop and machine learning it can be easily used database storage monitoring analytics and obviously it increases developer velocity boost team performance and improve organization impact okay but there are many case scenarios when you should think about okay at this moment you should use azure functions that is it. so they are following since with you when you can use function so for example you are building an api to implement an endpoint for your web application using the http trigger we can use so instead of blob storage for example you want to process some files which are exist on the server so you write some piece of code when a file is uploaded or process that and produce output maybe that output can be considered as an input for another function or another queue or another blob or you can build a service less workflow or you are chaining a series of functions together which can be durable functions durable functions are up is a wide topic but yes i can say in durable functions you can create serverless or stateful functions both which is the beauty of durable function next is respond to a database changes for example you want to run some custom logic when a document is created or updated in cosmos so that is also completely possible. you can use predefined time search queues you can use event per data stream and there are functions signal so these all are options available that you can use with azure functions 
okay now in the upcoming session i will discuss what actually you need to create this function in visual studio okay and when you will run you will see this kind of output at runtime and you can check it on your machine they need to run and no need to you don't need any license to run this function locally okay if you really want to publish it on the azure portal then only you need subscription and you can publish it and you can run it on server as well okay this thing i will discuss in my next session hope you like this session and i will see you in the next session if you have any question any suggestion i missed something then please drop a comment in the comment section i will apply on that as soon as possible till then bye bye